Hey everyone and welcome back to another conference logo ranking where today we are taking a look at the Sun Belt. This is kind of the final video in this series where we're taking a look at all FBS conferences and ranking the primary logos from worst to first. And I'm sad to see this series come to an end, but we've got some great things in store on this channel that I'm really excited to get into. So it felt appropriate to end on the Sun Belt Conference, affectionately dubbed the Fun Belt Conference. I mean, that's what I like to call it. That's what uh, millions of other people do as well, because this conference is fun. There's just a lot of great teams in this conference that each hold a lot of really fantastic logos to talk about. And look, I mean, by now you guys know how this works. We're going to take a look at the primary logos of all the teams in this conference. I'm going to rank them from what I consider the worst going into number one, the first. So working backwards today, we're going to start at number 14 with Appalachian State University, home of the Mountaineers. Now it pains me a bit to put App State here in dead last in the Fun Belt Conference. But to be honest, this logo has just not ever really done anything for me. We have like a standard varsity block A for Appalachian or Appalachian, depending on who you ask kind of for pronunciation. And then we can see Mountaineers in a kind of like scrunched cursive across the horizontal bar of the A. And I mean, that's the team name. So we can see the A for Appalachian or Appalachian and Mountaineers, the team name scrolled. Again, really small just across the A there. This reminds me more of like what you might see on like a high school varsity jacket. That's what this reminds me of. It, the, again, the varsity block lettering, which is the team name that's really hard to read there. There's really not much else going on for this logo. I think kind of what's been more interesting look for Appalachian State has always been, and I'm going to butcher some pronunciation here, the Yosef head, Y-O-S-E-F. It's kind of giving this like side profile of uh, this mountaineer guy. And his name comes from more of like the Appalachian pronunciation of the word yourself so Yusef like no matter how old you get always stay true to Yusef and for me personally like I think this guy just does a better job at representing you know but like both the what it means to be a mountaineer and specifically like an Appalachian man given his burly appearance and the name himself you know Yusef a very unique pronunciation of a word that's kind of truly only found in the Appalachian region of the U.S. or at least that pronunciation is just better tied to that region and we can see a more modernized version of a Yusef from 2004 to 2013 where they kind of had this like 3D effect with the Yusef head in front of a mountain range and then over Appalachian Mountaineers. And that was replacing this logo that they were using for 30 years from 70 to 2003. But in 2014, they went back to that logo directly. And so this logo here, it's very old. And I get that. I can respect that. I have a tendency to appreciate older logos more than, uh, you know, some of the like current, more over stylized marks that a lot of teams fail, uh, you know, <laughs> with having. But for me, this big varsity block A and that scrunched up little Mountaineers in front of it, uh, it's just not doing much for me. I, I'm sorry, App State. I love the school and I love the story of Yusef. I love the location of this of this program as well, this university. It's all just very interesting to me and I love the way that those things are, are all tied together. But this logo itself, this big A, oh man, it just feels like a miss. And at number 13, let's go ahead and take a look at the University of Louisiana at Monroe, ULM, the Warhawks here. Now this school has gone through a lot of changes over the years, kind of both in style design and in name specifically. I mean, they're the Warhawks now and we're gonna talk about some of the imagery that's going on in the big L in the middle there for Louisiana. I mean, specifically, Specifically, that the kind of feather design that the Warhawk is sort of peeking out behind. It's supposed to be a feather quill to represent knowledge. And then there's six notches in there, which represent the six overall name changes that this school has used. So, I mean, we're talking quite a bit of uh, name changes here. And the Warhawk, I like the name Warhawk a lot. And I've liked some of the looks that they've used in the past with that Warhawk. I think they've always done a good job of it. And the current version that we're looking at here, I mean, for me, aside from the coloring, there's not a whole lot to be excited about with this logo. Because again, the Warhawk himself, he's so small. And and he's just barely creeping around that quill there, that feather. He's just sort of like peeking behind it timidly. And then we can see just a U and an M kind of hanging out on either side of that L there. It's all just kind of like very confusing for me personally. I just don't really understand what it is that we're supposed to be looking at. You know, that big L with the Warhawk gets kind of the primary focus, but the Warhawk is so tiny and kind of shying away. You just can't really see what exactly ULM is, is sort of going for here. And I think that some of the other looks that they use with that Warhawk and even the lettering, it was all just a little bit more interesting as a whole. And this thing just kind of looks a little chaotic and unfocused is maybe the best way to phrase it. Let's take a look at a much more powerful wordmark logo here at number 12. This is James Madison, who's gotten a lot of attention in recent years, uh, you know, with like the dominance of their uh, football program as well as their basketball program. So a lot of people kind of been seeing this logo more and more. And it, you know, it really does pop out. It stands out, especially with the coloring is kind of the first thing we have to talk about here, that big, bold purple and then a little bit of white. I mean, the colors on this thing really stand out and really pop. And I do like 
like kind of the 3D effect with the with the white that's coming as like a drop shadow from the JMU. It really kind of makes the letters pop out a little bit more. And against that a purple background, I mean, that just looks awesome. But beyond that, I mean, <laughs> what, what's really missing for me here is the actual Bulldog, the Duke that they have used pretty much since the beginning of their athletic program. They've had this very princely Bulldog. You know, he's a, he's a Duke, so he's got his crown. He's got his cape or his cloak kind of flowing behind him. And, and it just adds this sense of like majesty, this majestic Bulldog. I've just always liked that look a lot better. And this, this kind of like secondary alternate logo that we're taking a look at here, I think is the best version of that where we don't see the Bulldog body. We just see his head popping out with a spiked collar. And again, his just big, beautiful crown. I mean, this guy looks so awesome. I got just a ton of personality. And I really wish that marks like that would be what James Madison used as a primary logo instead of just the letters for JMU, but which again, look nice, but it's really just not interesting enough to kind of carry this any higher. Yeah, it's fine, but it's really not interesting, especially when compared to some of the other logos that they've used. At number 11, let's go ahead and take a look at Georgia Southern here, who um, I'm not really sure where to begin with this logo, because on one hand, I really appreciate that we can see both the mascot with the big bird head there, and then uh, Georgia Southern down on the bottom, so we can see the, you know, about the elements of the school name and the mascot. And if you're familiar at all with uh, the patterns on how I sort of rank these, I always appreciate logos the most that have an element of the mascot and then the actual team name itself. In this case, we can see both of those, the Eagle Head and Georgia Southern. But in this particular case, I just think it's too much going on. Like Georgia Southern, that's a pretty long school name. And so, you know, to see all of those letters, the full team name and the primary logo, it's definitely a choice for sure. And the Eagle Head too, I like where they're going with that. I just think that he looks a little just kind of bored and a little checked out. He doesn't have as much aggressive energy as I think he likes to believe that he has. And the text, the Georgia Southern, that definitely does not really have much weight to it. It's just, it's too many letters because it's too long a school name. And so it just creates kind of a whole lot to take in. It's like, man, are we expected to read Georgia Southern every time? Make that a GSU or just eliminate the text altogether even better. And you would have a much stronger logo here. Kind of a little bland logo overall. A ton of gray kind of adds to that blandness too. And I just think this logo could be worse into something a whole lot more interesting than what we currently see. At number 10, let's take a look at Troy University, home of the Trojans here. A very simple logo, probably the simplest logo that we're going to see in the fun belt. I'm just going to keep calling it fun belt with a big T for Troy. And it is shaped like a sword, which we can see in uh, kind of some other former branding that they've used. They've, they've liked to focus on their like their Troy Trojan character, especially like from 2004 to 2008. That sword that he's holding is basically the logo that we're looking at today. The only thing that's missing is just a handle. But beyond that, this is the sword for Troy, for the Trojans. And I think that's a very, very cool, simple effect, you know, just using the actual, like the imagery, the symbol of what the mascot is, the, the big sword for the Trojans, using that as the T for Troy. Super cool look. And this is one of those times where simplicity is doing a whole lot here. I, I do like that they've stripped away some of like the craziness that was going on in the mid 2000s where they just had kind of like all these competing layered elements to it. Great look. Uh, Troy doing something very effective here. It is absolutely working for me. Troy is, uh, yeah, knocking this out of the park. Just one through nine. Uh, I, I just, I find a little bit stronger and that just kind of speaks to sort of the strength of the Fun Belt Sun Belt Conference. There's a lot of great logos, a lot of great teams. And that is very much true with our number nine pick, Georgia State, home of the Panthers. Now here we see a Panther face staring right at us with a ton of energy and aggression. Yeah, this thing looks fantastic. And they've come a long way, uh, Georgia State has, in terms of kind of modeling their Panther into something that was like actually fierce and tough looking. Because for a long time, especially all throughout the 90s, this thing was very cartoonish. It looked like something like out of like a Disney villain kind of vibe. Really sharp teeth, yellow eyes, and really rounded features. Very like, yeah, Disney villainous kind of look to it. And those looks are fun to look at now. But what we're left with, you know, the, the current version of this actually has a good amount of toughness and ferociousness to it. And I'm actually not showing the full logo here because the actual primary logo includes Georgia State at the bottom. So we can see both that ferocious mascot head up top and then the text of Georgia State. And I think that Georgia State as a whole kind of uh, tends to lean more into the mascot head, the Panther head, especially for their athletics. You know, that logo is what we see throughout their uniforms and on their helmets and everything. And so that's why we're, we're kind of focusing on just like the head as uh, the primary logo. This face that is just staring us right in the eyes is super tough and very fierce. And uh, yeah, I, I, I love this logo. And I would say the same is true with our number eight pick. This is the Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles. And yeah, uh, like we're talking a golden eagle. This is an eagle. It's golden. It's got that really bright standout yellow there with black and white 
great colors on this. And this does a fantastic job at highlighting the ferocious energy of this eagle. They had to change their logo a few years ago from this kind of more rounded eagle, which I thought was quite strong as well. Apparently the University of Iowa got in and said, hey, like your logo is just a little too similar. Whether or not you agree with that is irrelevant because, you know, Iowa swooped down and said, uh, yeah, Southern Miss, you got to change this. And I think that actually that was to Southern Mississippi's favor because this current version of the Golden Eagle, it's a, it's a lot more pointed and kind of has more of like an oval shape as opposed to like a circular shape and and that kind of like swoop swoopiness to it <laughs> for lack of a better term I think just uh, does a lot more in favor of highlighting just the yeah the ferociousness the intensity from this uh, golden eagle I, I think that that was probably the best thing that could have happened for this school yeah the thing looks pissed it looks ferocious and I'm a big fan of this at number seven let's take a look at a school that's uh, just up the road from me in San Marcos Texas this is the Texas State Bobcats formerly the Southwest Texas Bobcats so when looking at some of their older logos I mean a lot of things kind of focus more on on uh, the naming of Southwest Texas. They have not been known as Texas State for uh, for very long, but when they rebranded from Southwest Texas to Texas State and introduced this Bobcat here, yeah, a lot of good things happening. This uh, falls right in with some of the logos that we've already looked at and some logos coming up ahead, which is having, kind of having like a side profile of the mascot for the school. In this case, we can see a Bobcat, which is a pretty underrated cat logo. I mean, so many schools go with like, you know, leopards, jaguars, tigers. Bobcats kind of get a little overlooked in terms of being like a ferocious cat. Now, let's take a look at fellow Bobcat schools, Ohio and Montana State, like they all introduce this Bobcat that has a ton of aggressiveness and ferociousness. And I, I just th think that just gets overlooked a little bit. But yeah, this is like a mean pissed off cat. And we can see that here with the Texas State Bobcat logo. Yeah, we can definitely see those those fangs. They look super sharp. And this Bobcat is just ready to like chomp down a, a sneaky underappreciated team name and an overlooked logo in the Sun Belt and across NCAA uh, FBS football as a whole. Yeah, Texas State Bobcat underrated logo for sure moving right along at number six we've got the Lafayette Raging Cajuns University of Louisiana at Lafayette the Raging Cajuns here this is uh one of the best exclusively text-based logos across all of college athletics here because first of all like the name is insanely unique and when you have a name like this like fun <laughs> and unique it does make sense to kind of focus on just like the text of it of the name itself you know the Cajuns are actually a group of people and so it's it's difficult to create logos that you know are based on off of like a group of people, but the Cajuns completely impacted the cultural identity of Louisiana, which we can see a lot of in this logo here. I mean, for cripe's sake, there's a cayenne pepper acting as an apostrophe after the N in, in Ragin', you know, because this is it's not the Raging with the G Cajuns, this is the Ragin' Cajuns. And I mean, the font itself, it's very spiky and flowy with these serifs on it. It's kind of flowing to the right on the top with Ragin', and it's kind of flowing to the left with Cajuns there. And so there's a lot of like chaotic energy to this logo, uh, but I find it extremely extremely fun to look at. This to me just does a great job at encapsulating Cajun culture in Louisiana. And to me is by far one of the best, if not the best exclusively text-based primary logos in uh, NCAA football. Yeah, this thing is awesome. Guys, I hope you're enjoying today's video. If you are, go be sure and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I love talking about sports leagues and sports logos. So if you're into that kind of thing, subscribe for more fun. And let's get back to the video here with our top five, beginning with number five, the Arkansas State Red Wolves. Shout out to my Arkansas Arkansas family. Shout out to my grandfather who graduated from Arkansas State University there in Jonesboro, Arkansas. This is a school that I hold near and dear to my heart. And so it helps that I love their logo so much. You know, this red wolf here, it, it did change in recent years. Uh, ASU used to be known as the Indians up until about 2008 when they changed their name to the Red Wolves, which is a very unique name and one that I've come to really warm up to in recent years. Personally, I thought it was just kind of like a little bit generic when they first made this change. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, the Red Wolf, sure. But I think this logo in particular is kind of what swayed me because I think this logo logo is just super strong. I mean, the, the wolf himself with the fangs, the big ears, you know, he's so mean and scary looking. It, it, again, popping out right at you, kind of like we talked about with Georgia State and the overall branding as a whole for Arkansas State. I especially love this alternate logo with a giant A in the middle with ST on the left and TE on the other. Like this says state. But the A, you know, it's meant to kind of stand out and pop out because this is Arkansas State, a big A to represent Arkansas State. Big fan of that. And I'm a huge fan of this Red Wolf itself. You know, it really doesn't get the attention that it deserves. I especially love the eyes. The, the eyes are probably the most unique part about this because he doesn't really have them in a way. You know, there's kind of like a white negative space there that stretches all the way from his eyes to the side of his face and kind of gives him this sort of like phantom ghouly sort of look to it. And whether that was intentional or not, for me, it kind of gives it this like sort of, yeah, phantomy sort of appearance to it. It, which I think makes it all the scarier and all the more unique in that regard. Yeah, Arkansas State, 
killer logo. At number five, let's take a look at the South Alabama Jaguars. Again, another school and another logo that's near and dear to my heart here. This is one of the few football programs uh, whose field that I've actually been on. I, I worked the Senior Bowl in Mobile just a couple months ago. And so like Arkansas State, it kind of helped me appreciate, you know, the, more so than just this logo, but this program as a whole, I think is fantastic. It's, it's a very recent football program. Actually, they didn't have a football program until about 2007. And in just a few years, they turned it around into an FBS program. And so there's many people out there that may not be familiar yet with the South Alabama Jaguars, but uh, yeah, killer logo here. Another side profile mascot view, big scary cat with real sharp teeth. It's very round too, and I really like that because it's got like this motion, this energy to it, with just the head popping out, popping forward. You know, we can see all the school colors here, red, white, and blue, uh, which is funny because this is the University of South Alabama. So USA, red, white, and blue kind of go hand in hand. And again, like with Georgia State, the logo that we're focusing on here, it's just the mascot head, whereas the full primary logo includes the full school name, South Alabama and Jaguars, but the Jaguar head gets more of the focus for being like the primary athletic logo. And this is kind of one of those rare cases where when they're showing off like the text in the primary logo, they kind of have to use the full name for South Alabama because when they just say USA out of context, it, it kind of makes it seem like that's more of like a, like a travel bureau into the United States. And so, you know, it's got to show kind of the full name or nothing. So we can either see South Alabama with the Jaguar head or just the Jaguar head. We can't really see USA. It's just really difficult to do that without making you think this is some kind of like national team, uh, uh, that the uh, represented by the United States. And so that being said, just a really mean pissed off looking cat. You really can't go wrong with that. But at number three, let's kind of switch up the recipe a little bit from some of these logos that we've been exploring and talk about Marshall University, home of the thundering herd, one of the all time great logos in college athletics, which is deserving for one of the most storied football programs in the United States. I mean, Marshall University founded 1837. A lot of the schools that we were talking about in the Sun Belt are a lot newer. I mean, the second oldest school in this conference was from 1887. That's Troy University. So that's 50 years younger than Marshall University. Marshall has a history of having fantastic, strong logos that really, really stand out. But what's remained consistent throughout all their looks has been that beautiful, crisp Marshall green. I'm just going to claim that it's Marshall green because that crisp green that they use on their uniforms there, it's just, it's it's probably one of the best colors on a uniform that, which makes this one of the best uniforms in college athletics. And so to keep that color on this big M and their logo there, you know, with this pretty like edgy script of the herd, this is the thundering herd, which is one of the coolest names across all of college athletics. What an incredible name or nickname, you know, the mascot thundering herd, sick name. And so even to have like a nickname of that mascot, the herd on a band, in front of that green M. It's just so cool. There's really nothing like this in college athletics of having a primary logo that's sort of using like the nickname for the school. You know, in this case, the nickname for the official name, the herd instead of the thundering herd. And so, yeah, I'd put this up there with one of the all-time great college athletic logos. It's very storied. It's just one of the most iconic logos there is. So there's no question this is one of the best logos in all of college athletics. But when we're looking at the Sun Belt in particular, there's two logos logos that I just like a little bit more and I would love to hear your comments down below of which logo you feel deserves to be at number one but until we get there let's take a look at number two this is Old Dominion ODU Old Dominion Monarchs in Norfolk Virginia who are using this crazy crazy logo with this lion coming in with his paw to just sort of like tear you down we can see it all here we can see the name of the school Old Dominion University we can see the mascot that monarch there which is you know this is what I want James Madison to be doing here with using like a princely looking mascot with a crown on top. In this case, we can definitely see that here with this lion. And I mean, ODU has a couple different like alternate looks that they use here. I mean, these four looks, this isn't even like the end of their uh, branding identity package. Really, the crown is the one consistency throughout all of this here. And putting all these pieces together, you know, the name, the ODU, you know, the banner, and then the lion as well into this beautiful primary logo that we're looking at. I mean, it's just so perfect. It's so great. The intensity, the ferociousness from that lion with keeping the crown crown on his head that's kind of like a signature look like we like we said with ODU and they're killing it Old Dominion uh, does not get appreciated enough I'm sure there's loads of people out there that have like, maybe even never even heard of this school to begin with even though they were founded in 1930 and joined this conference in 1982 it just seems like this school just does not get talked about enough which is a shame because they have an absolute bang
Sanger logo in this Monarch Lion here. Incredibly cool. But my number one pick for the best logo in the Sun Belt Conference has to go to Coastal Carolina, home of the Chanticleers. Again, another very unique name. And there seems to be a lot of those throughout the Sun Belt Conference. But the Chanticleers, this punchy, fighty rooster here. Yeah, this has to take the number one pick for me. This, I mean, we're talking about logos with energy and with, with personality to it. This thing is just exploding with personality. Like, he's not just tough and fierce looking. He looks cocky. And uh, maybe no pun intended on that. But yeah, he he looks like he looks like an arrogant little shit. And, uh, and, and I like that look. I'm a pretty big fan of that look, actually. Actually. So the school was founded in 1954, and in the early 60s, they were uh, they were known as the Trojans at the time. And they were also just a branch campus of the University of South Carolina, which is why even when they rebranded to the Chanticleers in the 60s, they were using like some logos that were basically like a, a copy-paste job of some looks that South Carolina were giving at the time. But man, when they found their own identity, complete with these unique colors here, kind of like this teal look to it, this teal vibe, they really leaned into that and gave us one of the all-time great logos. I mean, this thing is just so cool. Even with that teal color, they they really honed in on that and made it like the color of their football turf, which love it or hate it, you know, you got to respect the willingness to dive right in and uh, take that color to the next level and use it as like the cornerstone of your branding identity. Yeah, Coastal Carolina, absolutely killing it. Uh, this thing looks like an absolute punk. This primary logo, the Chanticleer, I got to say, I'm just a big fan of this and uh, the Sunbelt Conference as a whole. Great logos here. Uh, even the ones towards the end were a lot of fun to talk about from like historical context, but I would love to hear your guys' opinion how you feel these logos rank let me know down in the comments below which of these schools is your favorite which of these logos are your favorite and any leagues and logos that you would like to see discussed or featured in future videos again be sure and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the fun ahead i have a lot of great videos and ideas planned out for this channel and i can't wait to share them and talk about them with you guys so be sure and like the video subscribe and i sincerely thank you guys for hanging out and can't wait to see you in the next video